When it comes to extracting a piece of text, your best friend may be your eyesight in copy and paste. However, Microsoft isn't spending billions of dollars. You could sling your mouse around with Control C, Control V around a few PDFs. Language models to the rescue. If you're watching this video, I'm guessing that your skills are rare to medium rare for text extraction. After this video, you're gonna be immediately bumped up a few notches. I'm gonna be sharing a business idea that I launched on Twitter and has over 80 signups. Today, we're gonna to be learning about the Core Library, which was created by Eugene Yurtsev and is built on LangChain. Core has a super easy interface for you to pass in a piece of text with a structured configuration output and get data out the other end. For this exercise, what I wanna show you how to do is extract the company and tool information that you find within uh, another company's job descriptions. So for example, here we see that they list Spring Boot, AWS, GCP, Elasticsearch, and Docker on this Okta job description. And well, that's what we're gonna extract. All right, first thing we're gonna do is import our packages. So the core special stuff is gonna be extraction and it's gonna be nodes. You're gonna pass in your open AI API key. Now, normally you do this as an environment variable. And please, if you're doing this in production, check out security best practices. This isn't it. Um, and then we're gonna do our uh, language model. So we're gonna do a chat language model. Now, yes, 3.5 would be a whole lot better uh, from a cost standpoint. However, four is better from a reasoning standpoint. It gives us a little better output. So that's what I'm using today. So for our core hello world example, what I wanna do is go over what an object in core is. It is gonna be the high level object that is gonna hold information about the configuration of text that we wanna extract. That is a long way of saying it's basically a configuration object that you're gonna specify what you wanna get out of it. This object, I'm gonna give it an ID of person. This could be whatever you want, but it's really helpful for you to remember what this thing is. And for the description, this is gonna be uh, information about your object. And this is gonna help the language model understand what types of information it's gonna be collecting. And then the cool part is gonna be under attributes. So within attributes, you're gonna put in the different fields or the different, um, pieces of data that you want your language model to extract from your text. I'm gonna have a text node and I'm gonna call it first name. Then I'm gonna give it a description which also helps the language model understand what it is exactly that you wanna pull out. I want the first name of the person, awesome. And then what's cool is you can pass in examples. So this is when you give the language model examples about uh, certain, call it sentences or pieces of text and how you want it to extract the output. So I'm saying Alice and Bob are friends. And what I want this language model to do is give me an output of first name because this is the um, node that we had right here. And I want you to give me Alex or Alice. And then I want you to give me Bob, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this extraction chain, and this is from Core as well. We're gonna pass in our language model and we're gonna pass in the person schema. You'll notice that I didn't pass in any text and so it's not doing anything quite yet. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna define my text. I'm gonna say, my name is Bobby, my sister's name is Rachel, and my brother's name is Joe, and my dog's name is Spot. And then I'm gonna take this text and I'm gonna pass it through to the chain and do predict or dot predict and parse. And so we'll go ahead and do that. And with this print output here, that's just a function name, but it made up at the top to uh, do a pretty print. So here we have person and we have uh, first name and we have first name and first name for Bobby, Rachel, and Joe. What's cool to see here is that it did not name spot because spot isn't a person, it's a dog. And so the language model is smart enough to not include that one on there. The next thing we're gonna look at is the dog went to the park. And so let's go ahead and print this output. And you'll notice that it gives us an empty list back because there were no people mentioned. So it also can happen or handle empty data as well, which is pretty cool. So say you have multiple fields that you wanna pull out instead of just the one like the first name. Well, in this case, I'm gonna do a plant schema. So I'm gonna pull in different plants. And for the attributes here, I'm gonna have a plant type, which is the common name of the plant. I'm gonna have the color and I'm gonna have the rating of the plant. So I have three different uh, nodes here that I wanna pull out or three different fields. Notice how this one is a number. For the examples side of the house, I'm gonna say roses are red, lilies are white, and an eight out of 10. That's even a little confusing for me to go back and look at it. But with the uh, output I'm telling it, I'm saying plant type, give me roses, and give me the color red, because these two are connected to each other and it's gonna know that. For plant type, lily, color white, and rating of eight because it's an eight out of 10. Let me go ahead and run that. And then for the text, this is the new example. Palm trees are brown with a six rating. Sequoia trees are green. We're gonna put that into our plant schema. 
or we're going to put our plant schema into our chain and go ahead and run our chain. The output we have, we have our plant. The first plant we're going to have is the palm tree. It's brown and it has a six rating, which is exactly right. And the sequoia trees are green. So sequoia trees are green with no rating because I didn't specify one. That's sweet. We'll say you had a list of data. Uh, well, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to embed one object in another one. So let's, let me actually start down here with a car schema. I'm going to look at a car here. I'm going to give it or I want information about the car. Uh, the BMW is red and has an engine and a steering wheel. So what I want it to do is give me the type of the car, which is the BMW. It's color red and its parts are going to be engine and steering wheel. My nodes that I'm going to do is going to be text which is gonna be the type of the car, text, which is gonna be the color, but then I'm gonna pass in parts. And parts is actually another object that we have up here at the top. It is gonna be the name of the part. So the Jeep has wheels and windows, wheel and window. Okay, let me go ahead and run that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this one and let's see what we got here. Cool, so we have the car, which is the type Jeep, exactly. Its color is blue. And then we have three parts, rear view mirror, roof, and windshield. Do you want to see what the actual prompt was that was sent to your language model? You can uh, give it your text and say dot to string and then print out the prompt. And so this is what Core created for us on the fly and passed over to the language model. Now, what's really interesting to see about this space is the instructions that we gave it even just a couple months ago were pretty straightforward and human readable instructions. Now, these are still human readable, but they're getting pretty nuanced and pretty technical. And that's the level of capability that these language models are able to do. And that's why it's really nice to not have to do any prompt engineering yourself, but you offload that to Core because Eugene and team are gonna be experts at what is the exact prompt that we need to extract the information. So I like to leave it to the experts for myself. One of the other cool applications of this as well is the ability to structure user intent. So this could be uh, in the example that you're creating an app and you're gonna be collecting natural language responses from a user and that user is gonna be telling you what you wanna do. Now, you may be able to go give that output to an agent and it might be able to figure it out, but say you didn't wanna trust an agent or you wanted something with a little bit more reliability on there. Well, in that case, you could parse the user response and get structured output for types of actions that you should be taking in your app. I'm gonna be creating a forecasting app. So my description for this is, users controlling an app that makes financial forecasts. They will give a command to update a forecast in the future. And so one of my text fields that I want is I want the year to be pulled out from this user command. The user says, please increase 2014's customers by 15%. I want 2014. I want a metric. So this is gonna be the thing that the user wants to increase. The unit or a metric a user would like to influence. Please influence 2014's customers by 15%. You get customers there. And then please input 2014's customers by 15%. I want the amount and you get the amount that's right there. So let me go ahead and run this. And then let me run this. And I say, please add 15 more units sold to 2023. And so what we have here is we have our forecaster. The amount is gonna be 15. 15 of what? Units sold and in what year, 2023. Now for the real world example about how this is gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a list of job descriptions and then we're gonna pull out the technologies that come out the other end. And I actually did this for a side project and launched it on Twitter uh, right over here. And what we have here is that list of companies and I threw this in Airtable and then up to Softer for a quick front end. But basically you're able to extract all the different tools from different companies. And what's cool is that if you do this for a bunch of jobs, well then you can get a pretty good idea about the tech stack about what a company's working with. Okay, so in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our chat model again using GPT-4, and then I'm gonna create a quick uh, function that is gonna pull jobs from Greenhouse. Now, half the magic of this is getting the data in the first place, and luckily Greenhouse has a public API, which is cool. So I'm gonna try this out for Okta, and in order to do that, all you need to do is just pass in the board token to this function, and then you're gonna get a list of jobs. Let's let that load for a second. Cool. So. The status was 200, which is good, and it found 142 jobs. So I'm gonna look at job number one to start, and that's not actually not the job idea, that's the job index. Let me take that. And so let's just look at the, well, okay, let's look at the first job and go ahead and look at it. And so what we get is we get a response back where we get a bunch of cool information. So the absolute URL, uh, some data compliance stuff, internal job ID, the location, it's in Melbourne, which is sweet. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go look at a specific job because I looked at this one beforehand and its job ID is gonna be this one and I'm gonna go ahead and print this out. So with Okta, we're gonna be looking at a staff software engineer. It was last updated April 11th and here's the link for it. 
go ahead and take a look at that. There's our staff software engineer. And so here's some content of the job description itself. And as you can see, it has a bunch of HTML in there that I wanna get rid of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use beautiful soup to actually parse that content. And I'm gonna pull out soup and say, actually get me the text for it. But then it's gonna return even some HTML, cleaned up HTML for me. And I want it to convert this to Markdown because this is gonna be reducing the number of tokens that we have, which means it's cheaper for us to run our model. Let me go ahead and run that. So here we go, get to know Okta. And that's kind of cool as you can see how that is bolded up at the top and this is bolded right here because it's gets it gets no octa markdown and then we have our clean markdown uh, text right here and that's going to be stored within the text variable next what we're going to do is create our core object i'm going to give it an id of tools and for description i'm going to say a tool application or other company that is listed in the job description and these are some negative examples because i saw it was giving me uh, analytics and e-commerce beforehand so it's only going to have one attribute which is going to be the tool and that's going to be the name of the tool or the company and for examples i wanted to load it up with examples and so it would have more information about what i'm looking for so experience working in NetSuite or Looker A+. Plus. Cool, I want you to extract NetSuite and I want you to extract Looker, nice. Experience working with Microsoft Excel. Well, there's Microsoft Excel. You must know AWS to do the job, I want AWS. And troubleshooting customer issues and debugging from logs like Splunk. And so we have Splunk that's pulled out right here. Let me go ahead and run that. And then I'm gonna uh, give it my tools schema, create my chain, and then I'm gonna ask it to do uh, the chain here, except I want to put this as clean output. Output. Let's go ahead and run this and see what it comes back for us. Nice. And so here we have a list of tools that it found within the job description itself. So in this case, Okta, yes, this one's a little bit of a whoopsie because it's the company, but I'll, I'll cut a break on there. And then I thought an interesting one here was Spring Boot. And so let me go see if that's actually in here. And yes, Spring Boot is in there. And if we were to look at what the heck Spring Boot is, um, well, it's a tool, basically. So yes, it, if, well, it's a tool, basically. Awesome. So the other thing that I saw, which is kind of interesting too, is they had salary information. Now, I believe in California, there's a new law that says you have to list the salary information on your job description. We can create an object that is gonna pull out this salary data for us. And there's gonna be two attributes, which is gonna be two numbers, and one is gonna be the low end of the salary, and one is gonna be the high end of the salary. And so this position will make between 140,000 and 230,000. And you can see here, I intentionally put a really sloppy format where it's 140,000 and then uh, 230.0000. And for here, I wanted to pull out the low end, 140,000, high end, 230,000. I'll go ahead and run that. I'm gonna say jobs go pull from cruise because I know that they have a good one for me. And specifically, there's one job ID that I want. Cool, it found 219 jobs. I'm gonna pull out that uh, job ID. It's gonna go ahead and grab it. And then here's the content and here's the cleaned up content that we have down below. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass it the salary range schema. And again, for this one, I'm gonna say, hey, give me the output. And then I want you to uh, print the output. And let's see what it gives us here. So we ask it, the high end of the salary is gonna be 165,000 and the low end is 112. And that is the, this is a quote from the job description and it pulled out exactly right there. If we wanted to triple check this, let's go check it out. Let's see, 112, and there we go. The position is 112 to 165, nice. Finally, I imagine you're gonna have a lot of information that you're gonna go wanna parse. So cost is gonna be pretty important when you do that. And one way to find out the cost of your uh, parsing is to use Langchain's uh, uh, get OpenAI callback. And in this case, what you can do is you can pass it your query, and then it's gonna tell you the stats around how much that's gonna cost you. So for that query that I just did on the cruise job, that is gonna cost me uh, five cents which may not sound like a ton, but if you're doing this for thousands of records or hundreds of thousands of records, you're gonna get yourself in trouble pretty quickly here if you don't have a big wallet. Keep that in mind before you go and run wild on this. If you wanted to actually take this project and go run with it, there's a few suggested to-dos I would recommend. I found a lot of success reducing the amount of HTML that I actually passed to the language model. So if there's any opportunity to cut out low signal text that you know isn't gonna have your data, I would do that. 
uh, you'd go and grab a list of about a thousand different companies, however many you wanted. You'd want to run through most jobs, but if a company has 5,000 jobs, you don't need to run through all 5,000 to get the information you want. You likely only have to do a sample from each different department because you're going to start to see repetitive data pretty soon. Uh, you'd want to go and store the results. If you snapshot this daily, that would be pretty sweet. Uh, oh yeah, a really good follow up here is actually, you want to go follow uh, Greg on Twitter uh, for more tools and if you want to chat about this project. And then um, finally, if you really wanted to do this too, please talk to me because with those 80 signups that I mentioned, I emailed every single one of them and I said, hey, what's your use case for a tool like this? And I got some interesting feedback. I wanted to share one of them for you. Uh, that actually came from an investor. So this is an investor persona. And they said, hey, Greg, thanks for reaching out. I always thought gold mine, or job posts were gold mined of information and often suggest identifying targets based on these. So that's pretty cool. And I'll let you read the rest of this on your own time. But basically, this investor said that they want to look at a company's job descriptions and extract information that they would find valuable for investment. And that is using core for structured output. Please let me know if you have any questions or leave a comment on there. Thank you.